Hi, a user on Magic's Movie Edit Pro Forum asked for some help about making some fancy intro titles and the example that he used is similar to the examples that you see on the screen. I'm using Movie Edit Pro Premium. The built-in effects that I'll show come with both Plus and Premium versions, but not Basic. Also, I'll use a couple of third-party effects that you may not have, but if you look around, you might find similar ones or even better ones. I'm not going to give you step-by-step -step instructions, but I'll show you how I did them so that you'll have an understanding of the tricks used in order to make your own title intros. It would be helpful if you already had an understanding of picture-in-picture -picture overlays, size and position effects, and keyframing, and of course, creating and modifying titles. The first thing I did was to get a background. This one can be found under Templates, Image Objects, Backgrounds, and it's called Horizon Bright. I sent it to the timeline and just click on ignore here. Note that the actual file name is bg underscore bright and not horizon bright. Let's look at the first example. There's a logo and a title that rotate in and then another title appears from near the bottom. The logo's on track 2 and I'll solo it. I made this logo in Zera Designer Pro X and exported it as a PNG file with a transparent background and then I imported it into Movi Edit Pro. You can make your own logo if you don't have one using a graphics program like Zera. Just make sure to save it as a PNG file with a transparent background. I'll turn off Solo and select the object on track 3. This is just a regular title. Double clicking opens it on the screen and in the text editor of the media pool. I'm assuming that you already know how to create and modify titles, so I'm not going to go any further on that one. I made the logo and the text move by using the movement effects. Starting with the title and looking at effects, movement effects, size, position, note that I'd already positioned the title where I wanted it when I created it. The title doesn't move from this position and you can see when I scrub along the timeline that there are no changes to the position values. However, the size changes as it zooms from 14 to 26 percent. So the text box changes in size from the first keyframe to the second one. It looks like there's some rotation. So I'll go to rotation, and when I scrub, there's no change to the rotation values. So what's the trick here? Notice that the text box is not a rectangle when it starts. It's distorted. So I'll go to 3D distortion. Watch the values. They change. To do this, I went to the point on the timeline where I wanted the effect to finish and created a keyframe. Then I went to the beginning of the object and using the mouse, I dragged the right hand top and bottom handles to the left and closer together to get the shape that I wanted. The keyframes are automatically created. This 3D distortion gave me a perspective view of the text and the impression of a rotation when it moved. The last trick was to simply give the text a fade in. Now for the logo. This is different. First off, watch as I scrub. I wanted the text to start coming in and then the logo. So I started the logo object somewhat to the right of the text object on the timeline. Using size and position, I placed my logo where I wanted it to finish and adjusted its size. Note the values. Then I went along the timeline to a little beyond where the text finishes its movement and placed a keyframe. This is the type of thing that you decide when you're making these effects. There's no standard. You do what you want to get the effect that you want. I move back to the beginning of the object and decrease the zoom to 1. Finally, I added a fade in that ends about when the zoom in movement ends. That's it. I didn't use any rotation or 3D distortion on this because the logo is too small and it's not very wide. On track 4 I have a black and white mask. I'll solo this so that you can see that it's just a simple mask split into white at the top, black at the bottom, like this and I moved it down to where I wanted the second title to appear from near the bottom of the screen. It hides the title until it gets into the white part, as you can see as I scrub along the timeline. Of course, this bottom title is animated using positioning keyframes. Without the mask, the title would come from off screen, like in the second example. See the difference? Without the mask, with the mask. There's a glow on the main title that starts a bit to the right of the first word, my, and then goes to the left as the title rotates in. 
I did this with Red Giant's Null Light Factory and I applied it to a green screen background on track 6. I obtained this effect with a much older version of Movie Edit Pro and you may not have it, so try some other effect. If I had applied the effect to the title, then the glow would not go beyond the borders of the title, as you can see on the screen. So I imported a green screen object and put the Null Light Factory on it. Then I removed the green by going to Effects, Video Effects, Chroma Key, and clicking on the green button. Soloing this shows just the light effect. I'll double click on the Null Light Factory effect in the keyframing area to open the interface. I'll stretch the window out a bit so we can see what's going on. You can see the start and end points. This took some trial and error because obviously I couldn't see the title. Back on the timeline, I gave the object a short fade in and a long fade out. This really isn't a good way to do this effect, even though it works. There are other ways to do this, and probably the best would be to export the title effect without the Null Light Factory green screen object, I'll move it to the side, off to a Magix movie format or to another intermediate format. and then import that intermediate video clip to a new movie and then apply the Null Light Factory to that clip. Unfortunately, Null Light Factory doesn't allow keyframing. It only has limited animation like a start and end point, so you have to find other ways to get what you want. The trick in this case is to cut the clip where you want the effect to finish. Make a copy by holding down the control key and dragging straight down. Now I'll add the Null Light Factory effect to this copy. Since my effect was already done on the green screen clip, I can just copy that particular effect and then paste it on the copied clip. Now I can add the fade in and fade out to this clip. Only the light effect gets affected by the fades because there's a copy underneath on track 1. And it just has the background and the text. Moving on, We've already seen that the second example is just a copy of the first one, but without the mask for the bottom text. I'll select this bottom text, go to Size, Position, and we can see the Start and Finish keyframes. When I scroll across, we see that the vertical position changes. That's all. The third example is a bit different. I used the same background and the bottom text with a mask, but for the text I used a logo that I created in Zara and I added the text into Zara beside the logo. Then I exported this as a transparent PNG file and imported it onto the timeline. Of course, I can't change the text or its features in Movie Edit Pro because it's just an image object. For the movement effect, this time I used a combination of zoom and 3D distortion. Under size, position, the zoom factor at the beginning is 70% and 100% at the end of the zoom. Under 3D Distortion, look at the starting shape and the first keyframe and then at the last keyframe. Once again, I started by setting a keyframe at the end of the effect with the shape as a rectangle. Then I went back to the beginning and moved the right hand corners to get the perspective shape that I wanted. Finally, I added a fade in. It's not finished. This time, instead of the No Light Factory effect, I tried an old New Blue Spotlight effect you can see that this is the old interface. I used the frosted globe as a starting point and then set keyframes and adjusted the parameters as the text moved. It was important to not make the globe too big or it would expose the borders of the text box. Okay, you can see that there are many things that you can do to get an interesting title intro. Just play around with the various effects. Use your imagination. I hope that this has given you some help in understanding how interesting title intros can be made and exposed you to some of the effects offered by Movie Edit Pro. Thank you for watching. Till next time, enjoy.